In this lecture, we want to begin discussing counting methods and how they relate to probability. So in this lecture, I'm going to introduce um, two different methods for counting, and uh, then we'll follow this up with another lecture that discusses different methods for counting. Okay, so just one objective to get through in this lecture is we want to solve um, counting problems using what we call the multiplication rule for counting. And then there's going to be some probabilities that we'll compute also using this multiplication rule. Okay, so what exactly is the multiplication rule of counting? So if a task consists of a sequence of choices in which there are P selections for the first choice, Q selections for the second choice, R selections for the third choice, and so on, there could be, like in this, just with these three letters, there could be um, uh, three choices I have to make, there could be 10 choices I have to make, or 20 or 30, and so on and so on then the task of making these selections can be done in P times Q times R different ways. That's it. So it's just a multiplication problem of the number of different ways you can make each selection. Right, let me give you an example of this. Okay. So there's a man and he has 10 work shirts. Okay. So the shirts, so shirts he has is 10. Uh, four pairs of work pants. So the pants he has, he has four pairs of work pants, and he has two pairs of work shoes. Okay, how many different work outfits does the man have? Okay, so different outfits. All right, so how you would tackle this, notice how there's three things here, where there's 10 selections for the first, um, first thing, four selections for the second thing, two selections for the third thing, it's really just this, okay, this multiplication rule of counting. So think about using this example, the task the man needs to complete is just getting dressed for work. And so he must make selections, right? He must select his shirt, then he must select his pants, and then he must select his shoes. So the total number of different outfits he has, you would take the 10, um, different shirts he has, you'd multiply it by the four different pants he has, and you'd multiply it by the two different pairs of shoes he has. So 10 times 4 is 40, times 2. This man has 80 different work outfits, okay? So because a work outfit with a green shirt, black pants, and brown shoes is different from green shirt, black pants, black shoes. That's why these numbers get so big. All right, let me... Let me follow it up with one that might not seem as um, as obvious, okay? So suppose a man has a six-digit PIN, okay, for a personal identification number, let's say on his debit card, okay? Um, the PINs um, are, excuse a little typo, are made of digits from the numbers 0 to 9 and repeats are allowed, okay? So what that means are the digits... Um, the pin number could be made up of the combination of the digits 1, 1, 2, 3, 8, 7, or it could be 7, 5, 5, 4, 1, 2. It could be anything like that, okay? So with a single guess, okay? So imagine I'm just going to guess that this is the man's pin number, okay? With a single guess, what's the probability you guess the man's pin? Okay, so we have to figure out the probability we can guess the man's pin. Well, this is just, um, we're just going to use the classical method for probability to compute this. So it's the number of ways to guess correctly with one guess. Okay, because this, this is what we're going to say, all right, with a single guess. And what you have to divide that by then is the total number of possible pins. Well, the number of ways you could guess correct with one guess is, is literally just one way that this is his pin. There's this one guess. So now you have to figure out the total number of possible pins. Well, so the task you have to complete is the task is you have to collect um, the task is you have to count the total number of possible pins here, okay? And the task consists of six choices you have to make. 
because there's six different pins or six different digits, I'm sorry. So you have 10 digits to choose from for the first pin, for the first digit, 10 digits to choose for the second digit, 10 numbers to choose for the third, and so on. So this is literally just one over 10 to the sixth power, which is one over a million that you would guess this person's pin. So do you see here how we had to count with the total number of possible pins? What we use is this, this multiplication rule for counting. All right, I wanna now introduce, just to end with um, the factorial symbol. So if n is a, a number greater than or equal to zero, but it's also an integer, so what that means is it's numbers like zero, one, two, three, four, no fractions or decimals. The factorial symbol, n factorial, okay, which would be something like this, five factorial, okay, is defined as the following. n factorial, you take n times n minus one, then you would go to times n minus two until you got down to three times two times one. Two other special cases, zero factorial is equal to one and one factorial is equal to one. So five factorial would be five, times four, times three, times two, times one. Okay, five times four is 20, times uh, three is 60, times two would be 120. Okay. Let me give you a problem with this now. Okay, so suppose a woman wants to make a playlist of her 10 favorite songs. And how many possible ways could she arrange the playlist? So we want to count the number of possible arrangements. Okay, so here's the thing. She has 10 songs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So your task is you have to select the arrangement, and it consists of 10 choices. Well, how many options do you have for the first song? Well, 10. But then after you remove a song, right, how many options do you have for the second song? Well, now there's only nine left. Then when you go to the third song, there's only eight, and seven, and six, then five, then four, then three, then two times one. And you're gonna be multiplying all this. Well, this just looks literally like 10 factorial. So I wanna show you now how to do this in your calculator. What you don't wanna write in your calculator is literally just you know 10 times 9 times 8 and so on and so on if you see this button here called math okay if you have a ti-83 it's going to be the same button you're going to look for something called prob right here prob and you should see option number four looks like an exclamation point that's the factorial symbol so the way you're going to plug this in is you're going to start with the number first you're going to go 10 then you're going to press math you're going to scroll over to PROB. You're going to go down to number four. You're going to hit enter, and you should see 10 factorial. And you hit enter again, and wow, this is crazy. 10 songs, there's 3,628,800 different ways to arrange this. So there's a ton of ways you could do that. All right, class, I hope this video was uh, informative.